Hello, Clarence community and parents. We're going to go live with our YouTube live stream at 5.01. We will go live at 5.01. Thank you. Okay, welcome Clarence community to our parent forum. Today we're going to give you a presentation on the status of the reopening plan for Clarence. We will also answer over 200 questions that have been submitted and we will have some time hopefully at the very end of the presentation to answer questions which can be submitted live. If you have a question that you would like answered at the end of the presentation, you can use questions at clarenceschools.org email address. It will come to us and we will do our best to answer it. Um, you can visit our webpage for reopening for all of the latest information. It has this particular presentation in it with the frequently asked questions and answers. It also has the hybrid model graphic. Uh, it has some flow charts for contact tracing and testing and other elements of the reopening plan. That's the one stop place for everything on reopening. And again, the health and safety of students and staff is and continues to be our major objective. We've put into place every mandatory health and safety procedure through the New York State Department of Health regulations. So uh, our meeting today is scheduled for 90 minutes. We'll do a short presentation followed by the questions that have been submitted, followed by live questions. Um, there are two more parent meetings this week, both at 5 p.m. on Wednesday and Thursday. If we can't get to your questions today, we will definitively get to them in the next couple of days. And again, we will have these questions and answers posted as well. So for us, uh, we wanted to make sure there were three forms of risk mitigation in classroom spaces masks and students will be required to wear masks at all times with the exception of mask breaks at least six feet of social distance and we're going to show you some photographs on what the desks will look like uh, as they are placed in the classrooms when students re-enter and we will also have polycarbonate dividers around each student's desk so these three strategies for mitigating risk we believe will reduce the risk of transmitting COVID this is a photograph, and again, if this is difficult to see, please go to the website and you can download the PDF that has the photographs embedded in it. Um, this is a photograph of what a office space will look like at your home school. This happens to be Harris Hill, but it could be any of the office spaces. There will be the polycarbonate partitions that will protect the office workers. Um, it's, it's hard to see in this particular photo, but there's actually a hanging from the ceiling polycarbonate dividers. If you can imagine a desk here, this would be the security station at Harris Hill. So there will be dividers for the administrator and, and security staff as well as for teachers and students in the classrooms. This shows an example of how classrooms will be set up at the K through five level. Remember, we're in cohorts for K through five, an AM cohort and a PM cohort. And um, students will sit like the example of the photograph here. They'll sit diagonal to one another and the AM desk will not be used by the PM kids and vice versa. So this is one shot of what a, a classroom would look like. This is another angle of the same shot this, is, this allows for 
um, six feet of social distance or more. Those polycarbonate dividers are between the desks. And again, we will cohort the kids and only one cohort will use half the desks, one cohort will use the second half of the desks. This is what it will look like at the high school level. We are, not, we are not able to do cohorting at the high school level, so we'll only have 12 to 14 desks in a classroom. Those desks will have the large polycarbonate dividers around them. This shows you some of the um, people in a, one of our high school rooms. Here's another look at it. So you can see that they are well spaced out. There's plenty of room for kids and teachers to move, whether it's with 22 desks or whether it's with 14 desks. Um, if you have a child who is medically vulnerable or you consider them to be at risk, we would like you to make an appointment with your building principal before school begins so that we can discuss alternative provisions and accommodations for your child. Uh, please contact your building principal. One thing that we've changed in the reopening plan from the last time we met, which was in late July, is information on testing and tracing. So the district has an obligation to notify the local health department immediately when we're informed of a positive COVID-19 test. We really would not be the first to know. The Department of Health is the first to know on positive tests. The primary physician is probably the second person to know, and we would have to find out from staff members or students. We are responsible for referring students to testing locations. We are not a testing location, and we will not test students or staff in our buildings. The Erie County Department of Health has an interactive digital map of testing sites in Erie County. You can click on this particular link to see the interactive map. We're going to make referrals to those testing areas that can get us the information back in the quickest fashion. We also have um, a relationship with Excelsior Orthopedics. They have a rapid 48 tur hour turnaround test and we can make referrals there as well. So just to reiterate, we are not a testing organization, but we are responsible for referring students or staff to testing should they become symptomatic of COVID. Um, the school district helps in the tracing process, but it is the New York State Department of Health who actually contact students, parents, or staff members and perform case inv investigations for contact tracing. The Erie County DOH will notify the school, they will collaborate with us, we will provide them with information, and then they will contact Trace in order to determine close contacts. A close contact is someone who was within six feet of a person with COVID-19 for at least 10 minutes, starting 48 hours before they started to feel symptoms, or for asymptomatic cases two days prior to their specimen collection. So the contact tracer may consider duration, proximity, masks, polycarbonate dividers, and other criteria in determining who close contacts are. It's up to the Department of Health, however. Once they determine that the student or staff member is a close contact, then that person must be quarantined for 14 days from the date of last exposure, advised to monitor for symptoms, and they also be recommended to get a diagnostic test within five days after exposure. Again, um, testing is is not mandatory, it cannot be forced, but it can be suggested. So close contacts can return after a 14 day quarantine period, or if they receive a, if they go and get a test and that test is negative, they can return for that reason also. So quarantine means staying home, monitoring for system, uh, symptoms, maintaining social distance, and having a separate room from the non-exposed people in your home, including pets, and a separate bathroom if possible. This particular flowchart is available on the website. It goes through what happens if a student or staff is symptomatic. If it happens during the school day, we have a protocol for it. Um, if it happens outside the school day, this same flowchart is followed. It talks about what happens if someone is symptomatic or someone actually is tested positive for COVID and what needs to happen for the close contacts as well. So please refer to this flow chart. It has all the information. It has been vetted through the Erie County Department of Health. Another thing that we're asking parents and staff members to do is screen prior to the time that kids come into the school buildings in the morning or prior to the time staff arrive in the morning. So we're asking parents to screen their kids. We're going to have a, tele, uh, a cell phone app 
that we will um, provide to every one of our parents. You install it on your phone. The app will give you a notification. It will prompt you to answer four questions. And if, if the answer to any of those questions for your kids is yes, then you must keep the child home and we're going to advise that the child be tested. So our app will be available shortly and we will uh, push it out to individuals and give them the place where they can load it on their phone. Uh, so staff are self-evaluating, parents are evaluating students, substitutes and visitors are screened by our school security monitors. Basically, there's a flow chart for what happens when you ask your child or when you answer the four questions for your child in the morning. So these are really the questions. Did your child come into close contact within six feet of someone who has a laboratory confirmed COVID-19 diagnosis? Does your child have symptoms of lower respiratory illness, such as a cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, loss of taste, smell, significant diarrhea or th sore throat? Does your child have a fever greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit? Or did your child travel to a state or country with a test rate of 10% or higher on a seven day rolling average? So if you take a look at the flow chart, if you answered yes or no, um, yes would be the green boxes where you're in, you must stay home, not send your child to school, and we would advise going to your primary care physician or getting a test. Purple would be you answer no to those particular questions, then you can come into the building. Again, this flow chart talks about what happens if you are symptomatic, what happens if you receive a test, what happens if you choose not to receive a test, and how often you have to be quarantined. Both of those flow charts are available on the website. Next, the Clarence School District will be offering a 100% remote option. We've already canvassed parents. There are many parents who told us they would like this particular option. There are almost 200 at the elementary level and another uh, couple hundred at the high school and middle school level. Um, parents must choose the 100% remote option by August 26th. That is the deadline. Uh, so after tonight's presentation, when you get your questions answered about our hybrid model, if it's the preferential, tr uh, idea of the parent to be in the 100% remote option with their students, then you must register for the 100% remote option by visiting our web page. If you visit our homepage for uh, reopening, there's a link right now where you can register your child for the 100% remote option. If you are not interested in the 100% remote option, you are automatically enrolled in the hybrid option. Um, good news, uh, Mr. Mancuso has been working with the YMCA program and the Clarence United Methodist Church across from Clarence Middle School has agreed to hold a uh, AM, PM for elementary students uh, child care program. Mr. Mancuso, would you like to add any information here, please? Right now, the Y is working on the details and how many people they could actually house, uh, house there. By the end of the week, we hope to get something out for everyone so that the process will be available. So we will transport to and from the daycare program at Clarence United Methodist Church to any of the four elementary schools to make it easier for parents. Uh, any comments on that, Mr. Mancuso? Okay. So we had come up with some hybrid ideas and we received feedback from parents and community members and teachers and we surveyed people to see what the preferential hybrid model would be. This is how the survey results turned out. First of all, for parents, there were over 1,800 responders. That's pretty close to 100% of the parents in grades K through five. 60% of the parents preferred the option of AM, PM, morning, afternoon cohorts, five days per week. Um, the other two options were about 20% each. So we're, this is the option that we're going to go with. Teachers, it was an even higher percentage of teachers when they were surveyed who preferred that particular option. For the six through 12 students, grades six through 12 students, there were about 2,300 responses. That's a very high response rate. Parents were in favor of 
Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday cohorts, ABAB cohorts by 62% to 37%. Teachers um, also had that as their preference, 58% to 42%. So we are going to have these particular hybrid programs in place for the beginning of the school year. For K through five, there will be half day AM, PM cohorts. Um, students will attend school Monday through Friday. This allows for the best routine and consistency for our students. The structure is the best option academically that we could create for our K through five kids. And teachers in the AM or PM will set up the remote portion of the learning each day um, with an assignment that can be independently done when students are not in school. At the secondary level, we'll have two cohorts, Monday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Friday. Students do not have to wait more than two days in a five-day week to be in person with teachers. That was our preferred option. Wednesday is a half-day schedule. Um, in that half-day schedule, there will be class meetings, there will be office hours, there will be instruction. The second half of the day will be used for um, planning purposes for remote instruction for the grades six through 12 um, teachers. We are cleaning each of the buildings every night, but because we have more students in the high school and the middle school, Wednesday is also a cleaning day for us. So in K through five, those students who have their last name with the letters A through K, they attend the AM session. Those students who have last name with letters L through Z, they attend the afternoon session. Same thing for the six through 12 students. Um, last names A through K get Monday and Thursday. Last names L through Z get Tuesday and Friday. And we're going to balance students. If there's a hardship for you, we are in, on one of the cohorts that you were assigned, we're asking that you contact your building principal. We will have siblings, regardless of last name, in the same cohort scheduled. So there are five groups of students in our hybrid model. Group A are the six through 12 students with last names A through K who attend on Monday and Thursday with remote learning on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Group B are the six through 12 students who attend on Tuesday and Friday with remote learning on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All of those students have remote experience on Wednesdays with a truncated schedule. Group C are the grades six through 12 um, select special education students who will attend school four days a week in their self-contained settings. Group D are the K through five kids. One cohort comes in the AM, that's last names A through K. Second cohort comes in the afternoon, that's last names L through Z. There are select subgroups of special education and ENL students that will attend school all day, every day. Group E are the students whose parents are choosing the option to learn remotely 100% of the time. And we're going to describe each one of those options quickly. This particular graphic um, just shows when kids are in school and when they aren't, depending upon their cohort grouping. It is on the website. For the, 100, for the elementary students in K-5, the 100% remote kids will be grouped into AM, PM cohorts, just like the kids who are in the hybrid. Students from across four elementary groupings, uh, all four, I'm sorry, students from across four elementary buildings may be grouped to develop a particular cohort. Clarence teachers will be assigned to the remote cohorts. The assignment may be all 100% students or um, a Clarence teacher may have in-person students in the morning and in the afternoon have 100% remote kids for the other half of their day. Right now, uh, based on the number of parents who have chosen this particular option, we believe we need eight separate teachers to teach the kids who are 100% remote. You can see how the breakdown is occurring with students per class um, and the sections per class by grade level. We anticipate this will change a little bit. And again, if you desire the 100% remote option, you have to register by next Wednesday, August 26th. This is what the instruction would look like for those students. These are the instructional blocks of time for students in the 100% remote option who are in grades K through three. These are the instructional minutes for 100% remote kids who are in grades four through five. Again, this presentation is posted on the website if you wanna take a look at it. 
This is the type of instruction that will occur for the 100% remote students. It's broken down into um, phases of I do, we do together, or you do. Remember, the 100% remote students in grades K through five will be taught exclusively by Clarence teachers with 100% remote kids in their sections. This provides many answers to the questions about what will the 100% remote learning look like. For the hybrid model, in grades K through three, the minutes are really the same. This is what students who are attending school in the AM or PM will have as their schedule. It won't necessarily be this order of classes, but it will be these particular blocks of classes. In grades four and five, these are the particular blocks. Notice that special area classes are included. The literacy block and the math block get the largest number of minutes because they are the priority um, skill areas that kids have to work on at the elementary level. This is I do, we do, you do breakdown of what the hybrid will look like from a teacher perspective and a student perspective and how the delivery will occur in an either synchronous or asynchronous fashion. For the secondary level, the 100% remote students will be scheduled into regularly scheduled hybrid class sections. So a hybrid class section will have students from that particular cohort of uh, Monday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Friday, plus they will have the 100% remote students in. Our, cl our classes will be balanced. Um, at the high school level, it, we will not have 100% remote students assigned to a particular section. We couldn't work that out. But the teacher will be responsible for the 100% remote kids and the hybrid kids that are assigned to their particular class section. So the instruction can be synchronous or asynchronous depending upon the lesson objective. Again, we're going to use Schoology, our learning digital management system, for teachers to post assignments, communicate with students and parents, create assessments, and share digital information. All students in all grade levels will be provided with a computing device for home um, and th that they can use at school. If you're a 100% remote student, we will either deliver the devices or we will have a time when you can pick them up during the first week of school. We will also provide portable connections to the internet for students who do not have a connection at home. In addition to class meetings during the hybrid time, teachers will also host regular office hours to answer individual student questions. And those office hours will be posted on Schoology. Um, students in grades six through 12 follow the hybrid model of two days of in-person learning and three days of remote learning. Students connect remotely with their classes uh, taking place in person at the high school or the middle school on their remote days. So students who are in grades six through 12 must get up, get out of bed on their remote days, log on to their computer, and log on to their class period when that class period is actually occurring. We are taking attendance for the remote students and for the students who are in person every day for every class period. We will have a meaningful learning experience for the remote kids and for the in-person kids, and that will be scheduled and created by the teacher. Teachers will make themselves available to respond to kids' needs, and they will respond to email within a reasonable time frame for students and parents. Again, we want students to have a meaningful interaction with their teacher and with each other every day. We will allow video conferencing. Uh, and live person instruction when the objectives of the lesson make that necessary. So those are individual teacher decisions. At the secondary level, um, there are different types of modalities for instruction. There will be direct instruction when kids are in front of the teacher, or it could be direct instruction via Zoom or um, Google Meet when students are remote. We will also have guided and small group practice uh, and again, that could be synchronous or asynchronous. We will have independent practice, which is mostly done when kids are remote. And s our teachers will also have office hours where they can provide extra help for kids. The learning center in the high school will be open. The learning center in the middle school will also be open um, for students to receive extra help. On Wednesdays, we're gonna follow a half day schedule. Attendance will be taken on the truncated schedule. The teachers will hold community meetings and instruction for each class session, and teachers will be available in the mornings for office hours on Wednesdays. In the afternoons, they will plan. We've had questions about BOCES, about the Harkness program. 
Um, if your child is enrolled in the high school CTE program at BOCES, they will follow the schedule, BOCES will follow the schedule of the component school district, whether it's remote, in-person, or hybrid. Any day a, stu a student is in-person in Clarence, they will also be in-person for BOCES CTE. So that will make it easier for us scheduling-wise, and it will make it easier for us from a transportation perspective. On days when the student is being taught remotely, they are also remote for BOCES uh, career centers. So the career centers will be open Monday through Friday to accommodate component district schedules. Um, they're looking to try to have a fully remote CTE program, but they don't have it developed as of yet. One thing that we'd like to do is ease our way into the school year. The first four days with students, which would be Tuesday, September 8th, September 9th, September 10th, and September 11th, we're going to have half days, and these days are going to be dedicated to helping those students in the hybrid model learn the protocols and procedures that are necessary for health and safety and for instruction. So this is what the reorientation half day opening week will look like beginning on September 8th. After Friday, September 11th, we'll go directly into the hybrid models. There are many helpful resources, including videos on hand washing, wearing a mask, um, and other things that can be accessed with this particular URL. It's also on our district website. For students are required to wear masks at all times, even during the instructional time, even when they're behind a polycarbonate divider even when they're more, less or more than six feet apart but there will be mask breaks so at the secondary level there's one five minute mask break each class period uh, and it's being talked about right now at the high school and the middle school how that will play out at the elementary level there's a five minute mask break at one hour intervals if students go outside and they are um, majorly socially distanced, they can also take their mask off. We don't know about playgrounds yet. We would have to disinfect playgrounds between separate student use. That's presenting an issue, so the playgrounds may not be available. Okay, um, that's an overview of everything that we've done in the past couple of weeks since the last time we spoke. We'd like to get into the questions now uh, and we're going to take all of the questions that were submitted. And again, if the questions were redundant and you don't see your exact question up here, we're relatively positive that the topic of your question will be addressed. So there are many questions here that we have answers for. And again, this time we've included the answers with the question, and this has been posted up on our website for your reference. So I'm going to quickly read the question and then hand it off to the administrator who is best able to answer. Um, how will students in the high school be able to unload one bus at a time, Mr. Mancuso? Right now, we do have a plan at both the high school and the middle school to slightly stagger bus arrival and dismissal times. Uh, the buses will have fewer kids, as we know that 50% of the parents have indicated they will be transporting, and another 10 to 15% we anticipate going remote. How will students transition from one class to another in the hallways, um, Mr. Michelle? The high school and the middle school have increased passing time, and they may also have staggered passing to help lower the density in the hallways. There will be one-way traffic patterns, but the timing will be allowed for them to get to class. How will classrooms be cleaned in between um, students who arrive for the next class, Mr. Mancuso? We do have a plan to disinfect between classes. Um, we are scheduling back-to-back -back classes, or uh, not back-to-back -back classes whenever possible to provide more time. And we are going to have uh, no more than 12 to 14 desks in a room. How will lunch be served? How will it be safe? How is it not risking everyone? Will there be increased, increased ventilation? And will teachers get a break? Mr. Mancuso, for lunches. Sure. There are three large group areas for lunch, so students will be spread out six feet apart. We also do have the polycarbonate dividers available, too. Uh, we do have lunch monitors and one of the teacher's duties will be lunch monitoring. Our teachers are guaranteed a 30-minute lunch at the uh, elementary and high school level. It's a full period at the high school. Okay. Have the HVAC systems been upgraded with high filtration MERV 16 filters? Have our air ducts, ducts been fitted with UVC bulbs? And is there a plan for adding fresh outside air to the system in a ratio to building side? 
And have the professional engineering guidelines been consulted and followed, Mr. Mancuso? We are able to increase the circulation and the ventilation by jacking up the system to a 50% fresh air. Um, the HVAC units do have filters. They're uh, currently a MERV 8 or 9. And we do have um, mitigation in the classroom with the polycarbonate dividers. Thank you. Next, do we have enough bus drivers and sub bus drivers to handle everything in the system, Mr. Mancuso? Uh, right now we do. We have been routing everything according to the surveys that we were presented. Substitutes are always um, things that we need. Certainly if anyone's interested, please call the transportation department. Uh, we have also been able to attract some more sub bus drivers through some of our ads. What about cleaners, Mr. Mancuso? Uh, actually, this coming board meeting, we are going to appoint four additional cleaners. And we also have adjusted some shifts of our other cleaners to provide more hours and overtime uh, possibilities. Will kindergartners have virtual assignments or written for the time they're not in school, Mrs. Overold? Yes, so assignments will be available in Schoology for all students when they are not in person. All students will be assigned a device in grades K through 12. So for grades K and 1, they will be assigned iPads. In grades 2 through 12, they will be assigned Chromebooks. And assignments will be provided electronically and, again, highly encouraged to minimize paper usage. Will kindergartners be able to play with each other, with other children, Mrs. Overall? Yes, they will, wearing a mask and socially distanced. If a greater number of students opt for the 100% remote virtual learning than the district anticipated, will the district give students more time in school for personal learning, Mr. Michelle? We're closely monitoring the percentage of families who have opted for the 100% remote learning, and that number remains relatively low. So the hybrid model is the only one that we can maintain the normal density. Um, according to our survey, 13 to 14 percent of the parents in the district are going to choose the 100 percent option that may fluctuate. On remote learning days, will the middle and high school be in a time schedule that mimics the school periods of the day, Mrs. Overall? Yes, yeah, so schedules were already provided in the presentation. Students, again, at the secondary level, in-person, hybrid, and 100 percent remote will all follow a regular bell schedule and are expected to be present for class. If schools close again, what kind of resources are provided for, for students with IEPs? For instance, during the past closure, he was only provided with a 30 group speech session, 30, I'm assuming that's 30 minute, uh, when he should have received multiple sessions. Mrs. Overall? So per the New York State Education Department uh, reopening guidance, related services will be provided to the greatest extent possible. What will the pick up and drop off look like at elementary schools? In other words, how will picking up your child work with social distancing? And will parents need to come into the school building, Mr. Michelle? Students will be escorted from their cars to the building. Parents will not bring their children into the school building. Will remote learning five days a week be taught by Clarence teachers and not Erie One BOCES instructors? And will students who opt for remote learning have the same teachers as their peers in the hybrid model, Mrs. Overall? Yes, students who are 100% remote at the secondary level will have a Clarence teacher and will log into the hybrid section. Yes, those students who are remote will have the same teachers as their peers. Elementary students will be assigned a remote teacher and will be cohorted with students who are also 100% remote. Um, we described the BOCES option when kids are in person at the high school, they were also in person on those days at BOCES and it's the same for remote. Will the students enrolled at BOCES miss any instruction of their classes at the high school, whether it's remote or hybrid, Mr. Michelle? Um, no, they will be aligned. Will supplies be shared at the elementary level, Mrs. Overold? No, students will not share supplies. When in special area classes, students will be assigned their own supplies for their exclusive use. Will students have access to the playground during recess, Mrs. Overall? Recess cannot be provided during the in-person time due to the shortening of the school day.
what equipment or technology are kids required to have for the remote learning portion and will they need their own designated equipment and will they be required to bring it, any of it back and forth to school, Mrs. Overall? As I mentioned, so all students will be assigned a district device, students in grades K through one with iPads, two through 12 with Chromebooks. Uh, and again, just to repeat, 100% remote students uh, may be able to pick up their devices or the device may be delivered to the home if needed. What accommodations will be made for students at the high school who don't schedule a lunch or a study hall? Can they eat at their desk during class, Mr. Michelle? Um, we're encouraging all of the students who have not scheduled a lunch to modify their schedule and add that lunch because students may eat a snack during a mask break, but they'll be required to keep that mask on just as the other students in the classroom. Thank you. How would a student at the high school go about talking to a teacher during a free period, Mrs. Overall? So students should contact their teacher directly and they can do so through Schoology mess messaging or by email. When will the high school supply list be updated and available? Are the requirements for bulkier supplies like subject binders being replaced with folders or other things, Mrs. Overold? Supply lists will be available uh, on our district website by this Friday. And yes, we are looking to reduce those bulkier items. Can students utilize personal laptops instead of the provided ones, Mrs. Overall? So every, again, every student will be issued a device. And again, issuing school-owned devices to all students ensures that our curriculum and technology align and are consistent across our student population. Now that we're doing some version of hybrid, Mr. Michelle, our kids are, will our kids be able to participate in sports or clubs? Uh, we will look at the extracurricular clubs that will be able to be delivered virtually. Some may not be. Athletics are currently canceled at this time. If you choose two full day options, if you choose the two full day option, what happens to students who have schools on Mondays when there's federal holidays, Mrs. Overold? So currently, um, looking at the calendar, there are three federal holidays, and we're going to continue to look at that to incorporate additional instruction uh, by missing those days. In the five-day option, when are schedules, when are special area classes scheduled, Mrs. Overall? So in the uh, special areas instructional guide addendum, now available in the reopening plan, there is a sample schedule for students, and that is located on page 24 of that document. Thanks, and I'm going to ask all of the parents and community members, the special area class instructional guide was just added today. Uh, it has a wealth of information on any of the special area classes. Um, on parent and student notification in our original plan, Mr. Michel, what are the policies for the bulleted items two, seven, and six? We've recently posted the flowcharts to our website that address all of those protocols for those bullets. Thank you. Um, toys, classroom objects, community play materials, classroom supplies, and PE equipment will be disinfected daily. If playgrounds are open, will they be disinfected daily, uh, Mr. Mancuso? If we open them, they will. Right now, we're not sure if we're able to do that. Will elementary classrooms be cleaned daily or in between AM, PM cohorts, Mr. Mancuso? Daily in between cohorts. Will high school students who do not have lunch, a, l a lunch period with sufficient time to eat, uh, what will we do with them, Mrs. M Mr. Michelle? Again, we were asking that anyone who did not schedule a lunch in a high school to modify their schedule to have a lunch. Will those kids have access to the cafeteria, Mr. Michelle? Yes, they will. For those who have had close contact with a person diagnosed with COVID-19, um, how will they be informed to stay home, self-monitor symptoms, and follow the CDC COH guidelines? Mr. Michelle. The Department of Health contact tracers will make the decision for those close com contacts and if quarantine is necessary. With the current preventative measures, six feet of distance, dividers, masks, is a child or staff member if a child or staff member tests positive for COVID, are the rest of the kids in the cohort considered close contacts, Mr. Michelle? Again, the Department of Health will make the determination based upon the mitigating factors of who qualifies as a close contact. If a child or staff member tests positive for COVID, will the class need to self-isolate or will our preventative measures keep them far enough away to avoid this, Mr. Michelle? Um, we're really hoping that the other mitigating factors will help keep them safer, but again, the Department of Health will make that decision. And when the Department of Health indicates that you are a close contact, then you must go through quarantine. 
If a child or staff member tests positive and no self-isolation is needed, will the rest of the class be notified of a positive case, like we do with other things, Mr. Michelle? Um, we'll notify based upon the guidelines that are consistent with both FERPA and HIPAA laws. So we do believe we're able to notify that there is a case, but in no way, shape, or form could we notify who that actual case is. Um, the district will identify conditions that may warrant reducing in-person education or closing a school in consultation with the DOH. Um, what are those conditions that we might consider for closing, Mr. Michelle? Uh, the district will determine in consultation with the Erie County Department of Health when operations will be decreased or s ceased. Operations could be concluded, conducted remotely. The, the closure process in, may include phasing milestones. The superintendent will make the decision to close and key personnel will follow the emergency closure plan. So 37 and 38 talk about metrics. Can you answer that, Mr. Michelle, on closing? The metrics all have to do with what were given by the governor and the Department of Health of the infection rate. Parent schedules, availability of technology and other barriers may preclude students from contacting teachers at a certain time. How will attendance be taken in remote learning and is it the same at all three levels, Mrs. Overold? Yes, yeah, so students will need to log in at the begin, be, beginning of their scheduled pe class period for attendance to be taken. And yes, all teachers will take attendance at the beginning of the class period at all three levels. So if there's an extenuating circumstance that means your child is a remote learner that day and for some reason they can't attend that particular class, we'd ask that you communicate through Schoology with that teacher. Are any alternative spaces being used, Mr. Michelle? Yes, especially when we're trying to serve lunches and phys ed classes, we're utilizing the larger spaces in our buildings. Mr. Michelle, will there be staggered schedules in allowing more time between classes in the high school and the middle school, hallways, walkways, et cetera? When it's possible and does not create bottlenecking by releasing uh, groups of students which would then have to wait outside the room. Is more time scheduled between classes at the high school and middle school than with the current model? Yes, there is. Are school programs, including the Y, uh, permitted to use school spaces, Mr. Mancuso? Right now, we're not allowing anyone other than the after-school Y daycare program to use our buildings. Mrs. Overholt, can you talk to number 44 on specials? Absolutely. Again, to the point made earlier, we now have very explicit guidance for special area instruction, again, in the areas of mar music, arts, physical education, and library, and that is now going to be available as an addendum to the reopening plan. Mrs. Overholt, can you also detail how remote days will work at the high school and middle school? We did show those earlier on in the presentation, and they are now also available on our district webpage. Along with the expectations and structures that exist within the plan itself. That is correct. Can you please detail how the remote half days work in K through five, Mrs. Overold? Again, just to repeat, those are now detailed on the district website, and they were also provided earlier in the presentation in a graphic model. When will work be synchronous with in-person, and when will it be asynchronous on all three levels, Mrs. Overall? So the instructional mode, synchronous versus asynchronous, is dependent upon the learning activities and objectives to commence in the classroom. And the amount of time in each of these learning modalities is in, presented in detail in the presentation. Uh, the direct instruction and small group work may be synchronous and asynchronous, while independent learning activities will be provided asynchronously. Office hours will be synchronous. They will be live with the instructor. So we had to consolidate some math classes and we also dropped a couple of other elective classes. Mr. Michelle, are there any more high school classes that have been dropped since our last presentation? We haven't dropped any additional classes since the notification from Mr. Smith in July. Thank you. If a child is home for not COVID reasons, can they log in remotely to avoid missing schoolwork? Yes, absolutely. If home on self-isolation, are the kids expected to log on remotely, Mrs. Overold? If they are well enough, yes, they should log on to their classes. And we'd ask you to consult with your physician in that particular regard. Are there details about the remote, 100% remote option, Mrs. Overold? Yes, they are also detailed in the plan on the website. Will the kids in the same class as the hybrid kids, will the kids in, 
Will the kids be in the same class as the hybrid kids or in separate remote only classes, Ms. Overall? So at the secondary level, 100% remote students will be assigned into the same classes as hybrid students. At the elementary level, the 100% remote students will be assigned to a remote teacher with other 100% remote students. What percentage is considering all remote, Mr. Michelle, at this point? About 13%. It's about 14% in some buildings, a little bit less than 13 in other buildings. What happens if a teacher or classmate tests positive for COVID? Does the entire class have to be quarantined, Mr. Michelle? Um, that would be determined by the contact tracer. What happens if someone on the bus tests positive? Does the entire bus have to be home for two weeks, Mr. Michelle? Not unless it's determined by the contact tracer. And again, if you're determined to be a close contact, you're home. If you are not determined to be a close contact, you can attend school. What happens if a family member tests positive for COVID? Uh, does that kid have to quarantine for two weeks? Or are there classmates, Mr. Michelle? That would again be determined by the contact tracer if they felt that that was a close contact. And again, we'll um, point people towards the flow chart that exists on the web page, which has all of the detail. Uh, my son is an incoming freshman and he has a 504 plan for executive functioning and ADHD. He was originally scheduled to have extra small group lab for Algebra 1 and he needs assistance with skills. What's the plan for these types of students, Mrs. Overall? So response to intervention and academic interventions will be determined as per schedules by building principles. Again, since the class numbers are, are cut in half, it will allow for more individualized attention for students um, who, who are in need of intervention. RTI supports, again, our pre-special education supports to, to students. We will still have structured study halls, tutoring, and the LAC available at the secondary level for additional help for students. It appears the plan for 612 has the kids going two full days a week with run remote day, with the K through five kids going for three hours. For families with kids at both levels, navigating the drop-offs and pickups is very difficult. Why didn't the district just do the same schedule for K through five and six through 12, Mrs. Overall? So the district did survey parents and teachers on their preference for the hybrid plans. The majority chose the plans that are currently in place. The district also feels both plans are the best academic plans that can be enacted under the circumstances. Mr. Mancuso, is after school care through the Y still available? Yes, it will be. Are there guidelines for how long each child is expected to be online versus self-directed learning, Mrs. Overall? Again, this was outlined earlier in the instructional delivery model. The instructional mode, synchronous versus asynchronous, is dependent upon the learning activities um, planned within the classroom. And the amount of time in each of these learning modalities is presented in detail in the presentation. Mrs. Overall, will those schedules and calendars be individually created by remote teachers or is there a set timing? There is a set timing. We did describe the instructional minutes earlier. So schedules are established at the grade level band. So there is a schedule for K through three, grades four and five, then grades six through eight, and then at the high school nine through 12. And the instructional delivery modes are then determined by the individual teacher. Mr. Michelle, the old BOCES plan did not seem to line up. How about the new one? The new one aligns with the, our Clarence model. Will there, how, where will the mask breaks be, Mr. Michelle? The scheduled mask breaks may be in the classroom, between classes. Sometimes teachers will even take the students outside for the mask break. Do you take the temperatures of every person and child each day, Mr. Mancuso? No, the families will have to answer those questions prior to sending their children to school and we absolutely urge them not to if any of the questions are yes. Will the pickup person have to leave the car and enter the school, Mr. Mancuso? No, all parent pickup and drop-offs will be outside of the building and we will use uh, adults to escort if necessary. If you have children with different last names, resulting in siblings de potentially being in different groups, what's the district going to do, Mr. Mancuso? We will absolutely match them up. We don't want children uh, from the same family to be at different times. My son's supply list for kindergarten had alcohol-free hand sanitizer on it. What's going on, Mrs. Overall? Yes, so the alcohol-free hand sanitizer was removed from the supply list. Alcohol-based sanitizers uh, now may be substituted in there their will, place. Th 
those uh, hand sanitizers will be available for students and staff in each one of the classrooms as well. Since all kids are going to school 50% of the time, can I keep half of the required school supplies at home and send them to school with the other half, Mrs. Overold? Yes, yeah, so teachers will be flexible with what supplies are actually brought to school versus organization that is done at the home for each subject area. For middle school and high school kids, can binders for each class remain at home and a spiral notebook and pocket folder be used for notes and papers while in school, Mrs. Overold? Yes, yeah, so again, supply lists have been updated to remove binders and incorporate pocket folders or notebooks in their place. Will there be a college uh, career preparedness course for juniors, Mr. Michelle? Uh, students who requested a canceled course should contact their guidance counselor to see what other elective courses will be offered. If half day options are determined for K-5, will elementary education need to be completed in the morning or afternoon when kids are not in school, Mrs. Overold? Yes, so learning for hybrid students when they are not in person will be asynchronous. Again, this is detailed in our learning modalities graphic. All learning activities will be provided through the online learning platform Schoology and other supporting technology applications. Student work time is going to be determined by the parent and, and the student at a time that is conducive for the family. Thank you. Is COVID testing mandatory prior to enrolling your child in school, Mr. Mancuso? No, we're not allowed to require a test. For kindergarten students, is there a practice run or some type of drop off before school actually starts, Mrs. Overold? So we are still working on the details of the kindergarten orientation and that information will be out to families by the end of this week. In addition to that information, we will also be providing virtual presentations to families. Um, is there a highlighted plan with the changes made to the original 731? Uh, we have the original 731 plan posted. We have the August 11th plan posted. We did not do a highlighting between those two. Uh, most of the information in the August 11th plan had to do with uh, testing, contact tracing, and some of the protocols for remote learning. For eighth graders, is there still an option to take high school algebra and earth science, Mr. Michelle? Yes. Will the district support a fully homeschooled option? And I'm guessing that means 100% um, remote option, Mr. Michelle. Yes, there's a 100% remote option for all those courses. Mrs. Overholt, what's going on with UPK? UPK will not have reduced hours. Um, it will still be held for two and a half hours a day. Um, nor is the district going to go to a remote or hybrid learning model for UPK. Masks will be required for students and distancing, distancing distancing practices will be in place at our UPKs. Any further steps may be determined by the individual providers. The New York State Education Department has provided districts flexibility uh, to comply with social distancing requirements for the 2020-21 school year. Um, another staff member can oversee students during learning, learning centers in an alternate learning space so the lead teacher can provide primary instruction to students. Are the hours different and are there going to be budget cuts, Mrs. Overall? So there are currently, it will still remain at the 2.5 hours per day for UPK. There may, however, still be budget cu cuts and numbers reduced um, in terms of students. Mr. Michelle, what about band, orchestra, and chorus? Um, all of those courses will take place. Specifically, they have to be 12 feet apart in band and chorus and they will still have to wear masks when singing. What are schools doing to keep kids safe during band and chorus and high risk? Mr. Michelle, I'm sorry, that, that's a repeat. Again, we're using larger instructional spaces rather than the band room. For example, we may use the auditorium and this will allow to get them 12 feet apart as the guidance states. Governor Cuomo approved schools to fully open. Why is Clarence still considering a hybrid plan, Mr. Michelle? Because we cannot lower the density to the amount that is required to keep students safe and six feet apart. Please describe exactly what chemical substances or cleaners will be used to disinfect the middle school and other, build, other parts of the school, Mr. Mancuso. All of our high touch areas, restrooms, doorknobs, railings will be disinfected as much as possible at every building every day. Um, all areas will be disinfected nightly. The um, products that we use for cleaning are all green products that we've used for years and are approved through the state. And the neutral electrolyzed water sanitizer is very safe. If the Clarence School District goes to hybrids, 
Are there options for taxpayers to take recourse on school taxes, Mr. Mancuso? Uh, New York State decides to fund schools through property taxes. There's no refunds. Can my child wear a face shield as opposed to a mask, Mr. Michelle? Um, face coverings must be worn. The acceptable face coverings include, but are not limited to, the cloth-based face coverings and surgical masks cover both the mouth and the nose. Uh, face shields are not acceptable replacement for a mask as per the Department of Health guidance. And again, we uh, continue to study masks and the uh, effectiveness of types of masks. And prior to the school starting, we will put out information on exactly what kind of masks are acceptable and not. The school district will provide students with cloth masks and we will have disposable masks in every classroom. For K through five, if my kids fall into the afternoon session based on their last name, do I have an option to change it, Mrs. Overold? We ask that you please contact the building pr principal with special requests. What's the school doing to ventilate when chemicals with, to ventilate prior to the afternoon cohort, Mr. Mancuso? Our disinfecting agent does dry in, in just a very few minutes, and we will absolutely increase the ventilation through our unit ventilators. I feel it's important for the older kids to be in school every day. Why was it only younger kids, Mr. Michelle? Because we cannot meet the social distancing guidelines to schedule those students in person each day at the secondary level. Will children be tested for COVID at school, and will parents be advised to go get a test outside of school, Mr. Michelle? We cannot require testing. We will refer, however, tests for testing. We will refer, testing. and on, on the website, we also have added all of the testing sites. Can you change your mind after the beginning of school for the 100% or for the hybrid model if you don't feel comfortable, Mr. Michelle? Yes, we will, we will look at that. We do ask that you commit for 20 weeks, but in the event that your child feels uncomfortable in the hybrid model and you want to remove, go to remote, please contact your principal. Do you plan to have classes outside, Mrs. Overall? So instruction will occur primarily in the classroom setting. There may be instances where classes are provided in an outdoor setting, weather permitting. How will the district ensure kids are properly quarantined after travel, Mr. Michelle? Um, we ask families to answer the screening questions, and that is one of the screening questions. Are the 100% in kids, remote kids integrated with their hybrid classmates? How does it work? Mrs. Overholt. Yes, so again, 100% remote students at the secondary level are integrated in two hybrid classes. If we return 100% in person, students will then be scheduled into those same classes. If a vaccine does come out, is it mandatory for my child to get it to attend school, Mr. Mancuso? That decision can't be made by us. It will be made by the governor and the New York State Legislature. What if we refuse to get our child vaccinated, Mr. Mancuso? Uh, you know, again, like the other vaccines, if it's required for school enrollment, then we have to abide by the rules. We don't really know what's gonna happen with COVID, however. Yeah. If a child has chosen to attend school with the hybrid and he needs to be absent on the assigned school day, what's the attendance policy? Also, will they be able to access remote learning, Mrs. Overold? Yes, so if they're not present during the instructional period, they are marked absent. They may, however, still access learning remotely when they are able to do so. How will you make sure shared surfaces will be cleaned between cohorts, Mr. Mancuso? We are going to disinfect all those surfaces in between cohorts. Will kids get penalized for absences if they've been exposed to a COVID positive person, Mr. Michelle? No, they will not. Why is Clarence not trying to spread out the students more across other local buildings, churches, et cetera, so they can safely return, Mr. Michelle? Um, we would need additional staff to be able to facilitate that type of model. Can you confirm every student has a plexiglass or proper name polycarbonate enclosure around their desk, Mr. Mancuso? Yes, they will. Why are we not having these meetings in person if it's safe enough to send our kids back in person, Mr. Mancuso? Virtual meetings allow this information to be disseminated to many people. Right now, um, hundreds of people could be watching this meeting and we could never do that socially distanced. How are the children that are going back to school using the remote option going to feel included in their classes and how much face time are they guaranteed with the teacher, Mrs. Overholt? Remote learners at the elementary level will be assigned to a remote teacher and will be cohorted with 100% remote learning students. Again, this will allow for a sense of community as well as regular interactions among students. And a majority of that time will be synchronous with FaceTime with the teacher. 
If the 100% remote kids are able to return in January, how will they be integrated, Mrs. Overold? If we're moving to a 100% in-person in model, students at the secondary level will remain in their assigned hybrid classes. For elementary remote students, they would be assigned back to their home schools. How will extra services like RTI and speech be handled, Mrs. Overall? Again, related services will be provided to the greatest extent possible per New York State Ed reopening guidance. Services would be dependent upon the therapist's schedule and would need to be delivered remotely in some cases. As previously stated, 100% virtual learning, again, is not as effective as in-person. How will instrument lessons for band be handled with fifth grade students, Mr. Michelle? Um, all of this is addressed in the special area guidance document that we posted today, but there'll be one in-person instrumental lesson held every other week for fifth grade students participating in band and orchestra, and one remote lesson offered on the opposite week. Fourth grade students this year will not receive lessons in the hybrid model. Mr. Michelle, when will the welcome letters be sent to fam new families with instructions for enrolling in the notification system? This is scheduled for release the week of August 24th. The remote learning plan in it indicates a device will be sent home with every child. What is the device and what information is provided to parents, Mrs. Overold? Again, students in grades K and 1 will be receiving iPads and grades 2 through 12 will be receiving Chromebooks and all informa information for device usage will be made available on the district's webpage. Will the kids be expected to supply PPE, Mr. Mancuso? No, we will have all of the PPE needed for every student. Mr. Mancuso, how will transportation be managed to avoid bottlenecks? Parents are going to have special designed pick up and drop off areas at each building that should allow for a smooth access. Mr. Michelle, what's our plan to identify asymptomatic carriers of the coronavirus? When there's a positive case confirmed, the, the Department of Health contact tracers trace both asymptomatic and symptomatic in the same manner. If there's an awareness, um, if there's an awareness of asymptomatic carriers, will there be a need to quarantine, Mr. Michelle? Again, for 14 days. Is there a plan to do assurance testing for students and teachers prior to the st start of school so that positive tests can be isolated before kids physically attend, Mr. Mancuso? No, there is not. Does the district have any concerns? The Department of Health in Erie County will become overwhelmed. Mr. Michelle. Uh, when we spoke with Dr. Burstein, they said that they will have the resources available for us. We do not have a reliable internet connection at our house. How can the school help, Mr. Mancuso? We can supply those. On days students are remotes, will they be part of the virtual classroom setting in which they're seeing and feeling the teacher lecture, Mrs. Overold? Yes, students will be logged into a classroom with their assigned teacher for their class or subject area. Whether or not it's a lecture is really determined by the teacher. The modality of their teaching is dependent upon the objective for the lesson. When students are behind the glass dividers, can they remove their face covering, Mr. Mancuso? Only during the designated mask breaks period. If we choose the hybrid model and my child becomes uncomfortable, can we switch to the 100% remote, Mr. M Michelle? Uh, yes, again, please contact your building principal if that happens. Will there be an orientation for remote learners since this year it's operating differently from last spring, Mrs. Overold? The 100% remote students in grades 6 through 12 will not be part of the first four days of orientation. Uh, they will, however, be um, available. The K through 5 students will be part of the orientation days. If a student that has to stay home and quarantine in the elementary level. How will the student receive their instruction or classwork that they would have gotten during their in-person session? Will the student be responsible for completing the online learning? And will the teacher email what was taught during the daily lessons that they missed? So all instructional materials for the student will be housed in Schoology. So the student would just log into their class and be able to retrieve all of their materials from Are that you go day. Are we going to be able to sufficiently test and trace any suspected cases of COVID, Mr. Michelle? Again, the Department of Health has, has ensured us that they will have that, those resources for us. My children are set to be in the PM schedule. How will elementary schools be sanitized, COVID's airborne and spreads through the air? How will air be purified before AM and PM, Mr. Mancuso? Classrooms will be disinfected between morning and afternoon sessions at the elementary schools, and we will use our ventilation system to the maximum. Will speech therapists be able to come to schools for sessions with their students, Mr. Michelle? Um, yes, they will. 
Can you please elaborate on lunch, Mr. Michelle? Um, elementary students will not eat lunch in school. The AM sessions will be provided a lunch prior to their departure at 1045 and take it home with them. PM sessions will be provided a lunch in the afternoon if they need it. So the lunch is for the next day for the PM kids. Correct. Please tell me how you plan to clean the school between the half day sessions. Is the cleaning going to be the same as it's done overnights, Mr. Mancuso? All high touch areas will be sprayed down in the time between the morning and the afternoon sessions. And that process only takes a few minutes per classroom. And then at night, we go through our regular cleaning process in addition to the disinfecting. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. What accommodations will you be making for families if they're not in agreement with the school district, Mrs. Overold? So parents have the option of the hybrid, the 100% remote or home instruction. If my child's hybrid, he will attend BOCES on opposite days of his learning, Mr. Mancus, or Mr. Uh, Michelle? Again, we have aligned, uh, BOCES has informed us that they are going to align with our model. My third question is about class size. Will parents be notified about the number of kids in each class with a max prior to their first days, Mrs. Overall? Class sizes are currently being monitored and adjusted. Again, we will maintain small class sizes as per the 50% density and what that is required. So right now, if people wanted a ballpark figure, we're talking no more than 14 kids at a elementary, or I'm sorry, at a middle school or high school level and probably no more than 12 kids at an elementary level likely to be less. What will you do when there's no substitute coverage for a teacher? Will teacher assistants be pulled? Will teachers be mandated to cover other teachers' classes, Mr. Michelle? Uh, each building will have a, a plan for substitute coverage based upon the discipline and area. Will teachers be provided with minimum synchronous learning requirements for virtual days? How will teachers just do office hours rather than teach structured classes with Google Meets, Mrs. Overall? So structures have been established for remote learning in grades K through 12. So Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday will be structured with full instructional periods. Wednesdays will be a community class meeting at the beginning of the session. And then office hours will be held in the remaining time available. How about grading and attendance policy changes from the past virtual learning, Mrs. Overall? Yes, so grading and assessment policies and procedures will be determined by the building administrator administration. Mr. Mancuso, if a child is absent due to a sore throat or low-grade fever but feels fine, will they be able to attend their class virtually that day? If the temperature is over 100 degrees, students must not attend school. But if the student is symptomatic, please see the flow chart that we have on our opening page. What's the procedure for exempting kids from wearing a mask, Mr. Michelle? Um, there is no exemption procedure. All students will be wearing face coverings. What's the disciplinary procedure for students who refuse to wear a mask in defiance of the rules, Mr. Michelle? Um, we'll be addressing that in the Code of Conduct. Students are, are required to follow the safety procedures. When will schedules at the middle school and high school be released, Mrs. Overold? Schedules will be available for secondary students on August 24th. Will there be an opportunity for high school and middle school kids to walk their schedule and get to their lockers, Mrs. Overall? Yes, so for students in grades six and nine, those students who are brand new to both the middle school and high school, this will be included in the orientation programs prior to the start of the year. For all other grade levels, these pre procedures will be incorporated into their first week back to school, September 8th through the 11th. Can you clarify band, Mr. Michelle? Um, again, students have to be 12 feet apart. We'll be utilizing those larger spaces where you can look at the special area guidance document that we posted today for more detail. Will the kids that select 100% remote be taught by Clarence teachers, Mrs. Overall? Yes. Do you have an update on sports, Mr. Michelle? Uh, athletics are canceled at this time. If parents are sending their kids to a private or parochial school, what do they do about transportation, Mr. Mancuso? If they haven't already done so, just contact the transportation department. Does the different district have a plan in place when school is ready to open fully this year? Does the district anticipate at some point during this school year we will open fully, Mr. Michelle? Um, we're confident that the model that we have in place will allow for a smooth transition. We hope to open fully, but that's determined by the Department of Health and the governor. Why has the district not had any two-way interaction with parents in a town hall style meeting? We could have easily come up with comments on YouTube video for engagement with parents, Mr. Michelle. Again, the amount of people that are getting an opportunity to see this presentation is much greater than we could handle with the social distancing. And we did set up the dedicated email address that people could submit questions, which we are currently going through and we'll okay. be talking about later. And hopefully we'll be finished with these questions in a couple of minutes and we can get to the online questions. We will not have moved into the district by the time 
by the dates of school visitation on August 24th, will we have another opportunity after September 1st, Mr. Mancuso? Absolutely, new registrants can make a choice of their option whenever they get here. We have kids in elementary and one in high school. If one has COVID, do all of them need to be removed from their schools, Mr. Michel? Uh, the Department of Health, again, the contract tracer will determine if they're considered a close contact and go from there and advise them. What about if a parent is diagnosed, Mr. Michel? Again, the close contacts will be identified by the contact tracer and quarantined appropriately. If a child has a sore throat, is it assumed that they have COVID and will they be sent home? Sore throat sniffles are common during the fall, Mr. Mancuso. We have a school nurse that is uh, very uh, adept at determining if it's strictly um, a cold or an allergy as opposed to COVID, and uh, the nurse will make that decision. We do have a nice flow chart on our opening page. Will kids be required to go for testing, and what type of documentation do they need to return to school, Mr. Mich Mr. Mancuso? The, the district will refer students for testing um, if we deem it necessary. The uh, Department of Health has an interactive map of all those testing sites. Will there be a staff member monitoring hand washing for younger kids, Mr. Michelle? Uh, our adults will help our younger children and give them reminders and help them with, with good hand washing practices. Older children will get in the habit and we'll also address that in the orientation. Mrs. Overall, what about eye strain on a mobile device? So those, stu those students will be learning remotely. Not all instruction will take place while in front of the computer. Various learning activities, including those that are not computer-based, will be incorporated into the instructional model. With middle school kids, is remote learning a full day, Mrs. Overall? Yes. With regard to middle school students, how do they get help, Mrs. Overall? Teachers, again, they will have office hours. Those hours will be posted on the teacher's Schoology pages. Students can also message the teacher via Schoology. We've answered 156. 157, in particular, will the Clarence Swim Club be able to use the pool at the high school, Mr. Mancuso? Right now, we're not allowing that. In years past, high school and middle school kids could be dropped off before 730 for supervised time. Is this still allowed, Mr. Michelle? Uh, currently, the drop-off for the middle school is scheduled for 8.15. I thought there was a mention of middle schoolers not switching classes and having teachers come to them. Is, are they cohorted, Mrs. Overall? Yes, that is true. So middle schoolers will be cohorted. They will be in the same room for all classes with the exception of their special areas. So art, music, physical education, family consumer science, technology, band, chorus, and orchestra, they will go to those rooms for those classes. Okay, we've answered 160, 161, 162, 163, and 164. In regards to moving on without masks or restrictions, does the state dictate when these precautions will be dropped, Mr. Michel? Uh, the New York State Department of Health publishes the regulations. How is student work assessed in the 100% learning remote option, Mrs. Overall? So students' work will be submitted electronically. Do we get a chance to send kids back to school with the hybrid model at a later date this semester if COVID's under control, Mr. Michelle? Um, yes, if we are allowed to open 100%, we would bring those kids back to school. Is there a way to indicate that my child may only rarely need the bus, Mr. Mancuso? As long as a student needs the bus, even once in a while, we will have them routed in. What about sharing toys, books, food, and safety, Mr. Michelle? Um, students are not going to be sharing any of those items. When the kids are at home three days a week and they're not in person, will they be able to log on to their classroom teacher, Mr. Z Mrs. Overold? Yes. So in the, in the hybrid model, students will log into their regularly scheduled classes when they are remote. Will parents be able to see a classroom set up before school begins like a typical orientation, Mrs. Overold? No. So unfortunately, classroom visitations uh, for parents will not be possible. Do special ed kids have a remote option? or must they attend school four days a week, Mrs. Overall? So only select self-contained special education classes are in school four days per week. If the school adopts the um, five-day hybrid model for children atten attending the morning session, will there be a virtual distance learning in the afternoon? And if so, what will it consist of? So we did answer this question uh, in number 74. Uh, learning for hybrid students when they are not in person will be asynchronous. So again, all learning activities will be provided through our online learning platform, Schoology, and other supporting technology applications. And that student work time is determined by both the parent and the, and the student at a time that works for the family. 
So we answered 174. 175, how are kids with 504 is going to be accommodated for extra time on tests and virtual learning, Mrs. Overall? So the teacher will determine how to access accommodations for the student. Maryvale and Chictawaga um, are going 100% remote for the first few months. Why is Clarence confident that we can do it better, Mr. Michelle? Um, we've put in place all the Department of Health mandated and recommended health and safety procedures. Um, Health and safety are paramount for us, and we spent four months planning and trying to work through this with building principals. So we feel pretty good that our hybrid model will pro provide a safe environment and get students to school. Mr. Michelle, how likely is it that schools will close in a few weeks because of COVID cases? And if so, why don't we just go all remote right now? Um, we, we believe the risk of COVID transmission is mitigated to the best extent possible. But we can never predict when there may be a spike or a reason that we would need to close. When remote are, sessions are held on Wednesdays, Mrs. Overall, is attendance taken? Yes, attendance will be taken on Wednesdays again at, at the beginning of the session. If a kid needs to quarantine, can they join the remote group for their quarantine time, Mrs. Overall? Yes, um, they, they certainly can, um, but they also should seek the advice of their primary care physician to ensure they're well enough for instruction. If a student is in a self-contained special ed class and they must be quarantined, how does that work, Mrs. Overall? So the special education teacher will communicate uh, with the parent as to how the student can access their instructional materials. Okay, we answered 182. 183 we answered. Are kids in the same cohorts in the same classes, Mrs. Overall? Yes, they are. Are you partnering with the Y or other organizations regarding bridging the gap in care that may result in working parents who are essential, Mr. Mancuso? Yes, and that was in the beginning presentation. We are working with the Y to provide care for the um, elementary both ends of the day. Okay. How about supporting families with costs like we did last year, Mr. Mancuso? We are not going to be able to um, support them with costs. Only if emergency funds were made available, and as of now, they have not been. How are you going to ensure complete sanitations of classrooms, bathrooms, seating areas between the AM and PM cohorts at the elementary school? We have additional cleaning staff assigned, and we do have a cleaning plan, and um, we've done tests, and it appears to work very well. Please confirm if my eighth grade child will be traveling around the building, Mrs. Overold. Yes, again, for core classes, the students will remain in the classroom, and for special area classes and lunch, the students will be moving. Will the 100% remote kids be graded or assessed differently, Mrs. Overold? No, they will not. Will there be physically distanced orientation meetings with new teachers for children whose families select the 100% remote option, Mrs. Overall? Yes, yeah, so for students in grades six through 12, yes, and in grades K through five, it will depend on a few different factors. Would it be possible to provide a list of students in the online cohort a week before the start of the semester to permit parents of online students to communicate and explore the possibility of creating pods, Mr. Mancuso? If parents are interested in sharing their information, we should be able to provide some lists. We need parental permission to do so. Right. Will students that choose fully remote be allowed to participate in varsity athletics, Mr. Mc Mr. Michelle. Yes, if, if athletics are reinstated for this school year, students who are remote are considered bona fide students and can participate on those teams. Mr. Michelle, can you clarify masks on buses? Uh, students must wear masks when they are on the bus. What about the plastic barriers, Mr. Mancuso? Do we have to clean them between periods? The barriers are not exactly a high touch area, so they won't be disinfected between periods. They will be disinfected every evening. So we've answered 196. Mm -hmm. um, We've answered 197. We've answered yes. 198. Yes. One, we've answered 198. 199. How are we going to ensure certification at grade K through five, Mrs. Overold? Um, yes, we um, are looking at that closely. We will be able to ensure certification areas at grades K through five. What happens if there's no Regents exams in June with determining the honors designation, Mr. Um, Michelle? Um, we will make that determination if the regions do cancel those exams. So as of right now, those exams are still on. Will honors kids be allowed to earn the 1.03% weighting as usual, Mrs. Overold? Yes, if a uh, student earns honors, if students earn the honors designation outlined by the principal, yes. How about kids who get a 90? Are they now eligible for the weighting? Yes, they are. If they meet the honors designation, correct? Correct. 
What accommodations will be given to non-Regents kids to help them now that they're in classes with Regents and Honors kids, Mrs. Overall? They, they will have tutoring available in the LAC as well as before and after school help. Will you have Regents and non-Regents Honors again in the future, Mrs. Overall? Yes, in future years uh, when we are not in a pandemic situation. Uh, Mrs. Overall, will the Guidance Department have information about students who couldn't get an honors designation or did get an honors designation this year? Absolutely, our guidance department will help parents and students with the college admissions process. Can we create a forum so kids can express their ideas and feel valued, Mrs. Overall? Most definitely, and we will start with the senior class. Will there be a site-based management team for this kind of work, Mrs. Overall? Yes, our strategic planning team will serve in that regard. Um, what about federal holidays, Mrs. Overall? I think we mentioned that, so we uh, will still observe all of the federal holidays. Will there be parameters put in place so that kids can have vacations and holidays without homework due, Mrs. Overall? So at the present time, we believe that all holidays on our calendar will not need to be used as instructional days. How about privacy returns during concerns during live streaming, Mrs. Overall? Again, no personally identifiable information will be disclosed during online learning. So if a kid's at home and they need to use their restroom, is there a protocol? And how can teachers be expected to document that kids are actually present if they're at home? So teachers will take attendance and that will be conducted at the beginning of the, the class period. If students need to excuse themselves, then they may do so. What kind of support and training is there for teachers who are not pro, pro, uh, medical professionals for COVID-related safety issues, Mr. Michelle? Um, we put together a document that will help teachers observe potential symptoms of COVID. Will we get ideas, uh, will we take ideas on, from parents for sharing things, Mrs. Overold? Always, yes. We always are looking for feedback. Will there be direction on posting assignments in Schoology, Mrs. Overold? Absolutely. And we are also posting instructional videos on our district's website that are specifically geared towards our parents. Does remote learning change our schedule, Mrs. Overold? Again, as long as we have the 180 days of instruction between hybrid and remote, likely not. Um, the the elementary, elementary schools run on trimesters. Can we still change between those particular trimesters? And again, we'll look at extenuating circumstances. 20 weeks would be the time that we will make that change for everyone. Could mask breaks be staggered in a classroom, Mr. Michelle? Yes, they could be. If elementary kids need separate rooms for lessons, who cleans between them, Mr. Mancuso? We have cleaners and teacher aides that will take care of that. Oops, got ahead. What does PE look like at the high school? Oops. Oh boy. For 100% remote learning, do they need to buy all of the same school supplies? And the answer to that question currently is yes. We ask that the students do have the same supplies if they are in fact remote. Um, question 220, for 100% remote learning, how is the work handled, uh, or excuse me, handed in and graded? Is it all on Schoology? And yes, the answer is, for the most part, all assignments will be submitted, handed in through Schoology. Um, when will the formal request be sent to parents to commit to either the hybrid model or 100% remote learning? Yes, there is a registration form currently on our webpage. We'd like it by next Wednesday, please. My question is about the graduation requirement for community service, Mrs. Overold. What's going on? So community service is postponed for this school year. What about musical instruments for fourth graders, Mr. Michelle? Uh, we will not be starting fourth grade instruments at this time. When you're 100% remote, how do you take a test, Mrs. Overold? So teachers are going to communicate specific protocols regarding uh, online testing when they are together with students at the start of the school year. So we've answered 225 and 226. Um, we are not a testing site on 227. What, do, what does PE look like, Mrs. Overall? Again, in the special area guidance document, all of that information is clearly articulated at each of the levels, elementary, middle, as well as high school. What about DOH guidance or other guidance that we use to make the decision on dividers? Isn't there, is it really a mitigated risk for dividers, Mr. Mancuso? The Department of Health guidance has changed over the past few weeks. The original guidance did indicate that polycarbonate dividers were a successful mitigation strategy and students sitting behind them did not need masks. However, as that changed, masks are required and we do consider the polycarbonate dividers 
as a good mitigation strategy in addition to the masks. Okay, we've answered 234. Will we present these uh, frequently asked questions on the website, Mrs. Overall? Absolutely, yes. We will post okay. them this evening. We've done band. How about concerts, Mr. Man, uh, Mr. Michelle? At this time, concerts are not scheduled. What about lessons, Mr. Michelle? Again, lessons, you will receive a lesson instrumentally, uh, one week in person and the opposite week remote. Mr. Mancuso, is somebody directing traffic at the, at the high school? We are gonna use our two SROs to help at all the buildings. How about a, a, absence or tardiness for medical appointments during the school day? If the student has an appointment in one of their remote days, do we still have to call that absence in, Mr. Michelle? Um, no, you would not have to do so. Communicating with the teacher would be important. Yes. yes. For sixth grade students who are 100% remote, are there certain classes not available to them, Mrs. Overold? All courses in grades six through 12 will be available to our remote students. Okay, we've talked about the orientation in 242. For 243, uh, we talked about that and answered it. 244, lunch, we've talked about that. 245, Will there still be two teachers in integrated classes, Mrs. Overall? Yes, two instructors will be assigned in integrated co-teaching classes. What percent of the district's curriculum do we actually anticipate will be taught, Mrs. Overall? Yeah, so we are priorit prioritizing the essential standards and skills in each co uh, course and subject area. Uh, this is the work that the curriculum team and teachers have been focused on throughout the closure as well as throughout the summer. The scope and sequence for courses will be adjusted to meet these essential standards as well as the time frames allotted for instruction. What about social interaction with kids, Mrs. Uh, the young kids, Mrs. Yes. Overall? So we trust our primary level teachers to make the necessary adjustments and in instruction for social interaction. Even though students have to wear masks and practice social distancing, our teachers will emphasize proper social interactions given the current constraints. Um, 248 asks about advocacy about these particular mandates. And again, at this point, we're following all the guidance from the New York State Department of Health and SED. SED we're compelled to do so. Um, there really hasn't been any time to organize advocacy efforts about this. We're trusting that the Department of Health and the State Education Department have full knowledge of what to do. Will we be provided with details uh, that map out the bulleted information on page four, Mr. Michelle? Yes, please check the, the reopening web page. The new information is provided. Mr. Michelle, what about these faculty and staff procedures? Will they be posted? Um, yes, the high school, middle school, and elementary school procedures have designed them, and they will be posted before the opening of school. Mr. Michelle, are you the coordinator representing schools for contact tracing and working with the DOH? Uh, I, I, along with our head nurse, Hannah Muller, will be working with the DOH. Who from the school will be coordinating with um, uh, on student staff member schedules? Is this being pushed to the parent staff member to provide to the county? Is this your job, Mr. Michelle? Um, the Erie County Department of Health will conduct the contact tracing and identify those close contacts. The portion plan has been rewritten and we've posted that online. Okay, we've answered 254. Can you share regarding the level of expected education between the plans proposed. If you were, if you remove the benefit of student to student in-person contact from the equation, can you provide the compared <coughs> expected experience across the models? Does the district expect the 100% remote model to be the best educational experience, Mrs. Overall? So the district believes that time in front of a teacher is a more effective and efficient educational process for our students. What about class size in kindergarten, Mrs. Overall? We anticipate class size around 10 to 12 students at this time. Okay, we've answered 258 and 259. Um, are subs tested, Mr. Michelle? Uh, the, the subs will be tested by our security monitors as they enter the building. Mrs. Overall, can we do anything to help kids hear um, better in the classroom? We are currently working on an audio amplification system. What about lockdown drills or fire drills, Mr. Michelle? We still have to conduct lockdown and, and fire drills, but those will be done with social distancing. Okay, um, it's six, this is the, really the end of our session, but we're going to extend. We're gonna extend for another 15 minutes to take questions from the audience. Um, please email questions at clarenceschools.org. Do you have any questions that have been emailed to you, Mr. Michelle, so far? Are lockers being used for students who are in school hybrid? 
Um, can you answer that one, Mrs. Yes, they are. Students will have lockers, uh, both at the elementary as well as the secondary levels, but access to those lockers will be limited to just a few times throughout the day. The question is, what happens to the division between students in K through five if all students are forced to re return to 100% remote learning? Will they maintain their cohort of online learning or will there be a mixing with the hybrid students to reform classes? So based on the schedules that we have developed um, for a entirely uh, for a cohort that is hybrid we believe that we could easily transition that hybrid group to a 100 percent remote learning situation thank you are there other questions mr michelle um, yes mr mancuso are lunches being provided for free this year for all students no they are not um, naturally free and reduced lunches are going to be available but everyone else will have to pay as normal uh, also, Mr. Mancuso, have lids been installed on toilets to mitigate the risk of the aerosol spread? We are beginning that process. How often will they be sanitized? They will be sanitized as often as we possibly can during the day. Mrs. Overholt, how will band work for 100% remote students? So we will be providing uh, synchronous opportunities for our students in band that would be um, online entirely for those students. Again, this is explicitly addressed in our special area guidance document. Uh, the question is, are students changing for PE? The answer is no. Students the answer will, is no, correct. will not be changing for PE. Will the number of community service hours be adjusted for the graduate class of 2022? Again, the uh, community service hours for this year's class are uh, waived. We, we will not have the requirement. We'll take a look at the class of 2022 next year. Can remote learners utilize the LAC? Yes, they would have to reach out to the teacher that oversees the learning center or the LAC here at the high school. Is a 100% remote learning op an option for special education students in the middle school? And if so, who will be teaching them? Yes, and the teacher would be a Clarence teacher. How long would it take to go from the hybrid model to full time? We think we could do it relatively quickly. Um, that's one of the advantages of the model that we have. We already have a full section of teachers or of students for each teacher at the high school, elementary, and middle school level. We just have to put them together. Mr. Mancuso, how many nurses are there in each building? Normally we have one nurse at each building and a floater nurse that maintains uh, mainly at the high school. For the beginning of school, we're gonna get an extra nurse at every building. Will K-5 remote students receive a music supply bag that was referenced in the specials plan? How do I pick up the school supply kit I ordered if I choose 100% remote? Um, we would ask that you contact your building principal to schedule that pickup. Mr. Mancuso, why do we not clean the, divide, the polycarbonate dividers between classes? The polycarbonate dividers are not normally a high touch area. Certainly as the school opens and classes uh, develop, if there are areas like that, that we need to disinfect during classes, we'll make every effort to do so. Are students allowed to use the restrooms between classes? Yes. They are. We're trying to discourage between classes uh, with congregation in the restrooms. Uh, it's better if a student just asks permission to go to the restroom from their class. Can I opt my student out of specials to optimize the amount of instructional time? No. Will the school buildings be ready to open in time with the polycarbonate dividers installed? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is 
It was mentioned that parents were unable to visit the classrooms prior to the beginning of the school year like in years past. Will the kindergartens be able to visit with the parents dropping them off supplies and acclimate to the new school year prior to the orientation week? That will all be addressed in the information forthcoming from the four elementary building principals. Can remote families pick up lunch, Mr. Mancuso? Yes, they can. And they can order the lunch online. Correct. Will there be direction given to student drivers who drive themselves to school as to which door to use? Yes, yeah, we, we will be. How are bathrooms being monitored? Well, we have hall monitors, and the hall monitors check the bathrooms. Uh, we're also asking teachers to be in the hallway between classes to make sure there's no congregation near the bathrooms. The question is, do students need to bring devices back and forth from school? And the answer to that question is yes. So students will be able to bring their devices back and forth. Will there be open house this year? All open houses have been scheduled. We will adhere to those dates, but they will be provided virtually to parents and families. Again, there's a question about will families who have students that are in all of the models be taught by Clarence teachers or by outside teachers? All t students will be taught by Clarence teachers. All, all Clarence teachers, that is correct. Will supply kits be delivered to classrooms? What about remote learners? Again, we can either have them scheduled to be picked up by the families, or in the event that a family needs that dropped off, we can arrange for that as well. What will open houses look like in the fall? I think we just described that they will all be conducted virtually. Will there be a swim unit in phys ed? Likely, but we're still talking about that. Can students attend extra days to get more help? No, that won't be possible in the hybrid model. Where are middle, schools eating, middle school students eating lunch? It's a combination of the cafeterias. We're also utilizing larger spaces that were formerly a wrestling room, a ping pong room, and there are very large spaces we're gonna add desks to. And dividers if necessary. Are there polycarbonate dividers present at the lunch tables? We just said yes, we, would, we will maybe adding those. I've never used Schoology for my kindergarten child. Will this information for login be provided for us? Absolutely, so again, on our district webpage under curriculum, we will have a number of video tutorial resources made available for parents. If students are remote, how do they log into classes? That would be done through Schoology or whatever other system that the teacher may be using that day. That is correct. So along with tutorial videos for parents, we will also make tutorial videos available for all of our student population as well. How will snow days be handled? Do we just log in remotely? Good question, and we don't have an answer for that one yet. Will CMS students move classes or will their teachers move to their classroom? So again, students will remain in their class classrooms for all of their core area classes. They will only move for their special area classes. Teachers will be doing the moving. Uh, will student work remote hybrid be turned in through the computer or on paper or a mixture of both? How will they be grading the work? So. A majority of assignments will be submitted electronically. We highly, highly encourage electronic uh, instructional materials really to reduce the 
amount of paper that is utilized. Sometimes with parents working at home, the bandwidth is all needed at one time. Will students be able to utilize their smartphone to be able to participate in classes? Certainly. When will elementary students get their teacher assignment? We anticipate that information will go out to families by the end of next week. I've ordered my supply list already. Can I get another supply list for what I need to have at home for the other half of the day? Yes, again, so reference the uh, updated supply lists that have been posted on all of the school web pages. My son is a 15 to one student and he receives multiple ther therapies in a week. Is there a way for him to receive therapies in person instead of teletherapy? There is a way for some of those therapies to be done in person, uh, especially at the six through 12 level. Is the polycarbonate divider around my child's desk K through five only used by them? Yes, it is. Will teacher aids still be used in K through five classrooms? Yes, they will. The question is, so days that our high schooler goes to school, they are required to bring the Chromebooks or are they just being used when they're at home? Again, the students should be bringing their devices back and forth to school each day that they are in attendance. Will high school students need to buy a parking permit this year if they drive themselves? We've waived the parking permit fee for this year. Will students be given stretch breaks since they have to sit so much during the cohorted time? We'll work it out. Will there be heat days considered if we are wearing masks? We certainly are going to try to make sure that the ventilation is appropriate. Um, and we think that will take care of it. Yes, the slideshow will be available after this session. It's available now. It's currently on the website. Will computer bags be supplied with the computers? No, however, each device does have a protective covering. If a child ruins their mask, are there disposable ones available? Yes, yes. there are. Yes. The question is, will we see a pick of a classroom once the poly in place have a realistic view of the classroom? Um, the, the models that we presented, although there were adults sitting in, in the chairs, those are the models that we will have in place. That is great. We can try to take some pictures the first couple days of school to, with kids in those desks and get them posted. Are students expected to wear masks during phys ed class? Well, um, they would need to get 12 feet apart in phys ed class in order to engage in aerobic activities and remove their mask. So for the most part, yes. Will seniors be able to meet with their school counselor for individual college planning? Yes. Can fans be used in classrooms? No, that's not going to be allowed. Metrics or data, do you, what do you need for schools to fully reopen? Well, we would need, number one, the Department of Health to issue different guidelines about social distancing. Um, with six feet parameters, we don't have class sizes that are, we don't have classrooms that are large enough or size, sizes that are small enough in order to put kids six feet apart in a classroom. That's the major down, that's the major item that prevents us from being fully, fully in person. 
Is it too late to request a lunch at, for my CHS student? No. No, no. We, we can make schedule changes all the way through the first couple weeks of school. We answered this question, um, Mrs. Overholt. Why can't we just teach the core subjects and then teach all the special areas at a later time? Um, and again, we want to ensure a well-rounded educational experience for all students, and we b believe that we have been able to schedule that into our instructional models. When will we know the grading policy from the specific buildings? First couple weeks of school, the kids will be bringing the grading policies home. Will there be remote phys ed offered? Yes. Yes. Will textbooks be provided for 100% remote students? Yes, we will be able to provide textbooks to students. We are currently looking at e-texts also for, to replace some of our, our textbooks as well. The question's coming again about having to do with the, the CTE classes from BOCES being offered fully remote. They have not had a fully remote model designed at this time. No. In the event a, a parent is working and a student can't log on to a, a live uh, presentation, would they be marked as absent? Well, they would be for the time being, but we would, we would ask the parent or the student to make sure they make connections with the teachers. Right. Teachers will make the necessary arrangements. How will remote students pick up textbooks and or packets, and will packets be available for 100% remote students? Again, that would be something that we ask that you would contact the building principal um, and arrange for either pickup or for delivery to the home. And in that case, uh, the packets can be made available as well. Mr. Mancuso, when and where will Chromebooks be distributed? Chromebooks will be distributed beginning of school. Um, if they need to be delivered, we can deliver them. We will notify each building where the Chromebooks can be picked up. If we said our kids needed the bus, do we have to contact the bus company to be sure that they are on the list? Transportation. No, if you already said that you need a bus, you'll be on the list to be routed. Will the afternoon Y programs be at the elementary school? If my child has a hearing device, will there be FM systems available? Yes, they are. Okay. And, and that's a yes to both of those questions. How far in advance will any work be given to students when it's assigned? Again, so teachers will be um, making weekly agendas available on their Schoology pages. So students will be able to see a week at a glance. So they'll be able to see what is coming up um, in terms of assignments. Mr. Mancuso, did the Y program mention that Wi-Fi would be available at the after school program? It is available at our building after school program. I don't know if it'll be available off site.
If we answered opt out on prior surveys for transportation, will we be able to change this? And if so, how do we make the change? Yes, you can. And the best way to do it is just to call the transportation office. Given the recommendation for the HVAC filter levels, why are we not meeting that specific level? Our current, Mr. Mancuso? Our current unit ventilators cannot, can, uh, can, cannot support a filter other than the MERV-8 that's in there. So the question is, just to clarify, um, K, I believe it should K to five students will be getting a lunch break during their half day. And again, lunch was not scheduled in the K through five hybrid model. Lunch, however, will be provided to students. They may pick up their lunch uh, in the AM. They may pick it up when they depart at 1045. And then for the PM session, they may also receive their lunch at their departure the day prior. But the lunch, 30 minutes is not scheduled into the instructional day. Mr. Mancuso, do you know if the Y program will be offering before school care for the PHEM cohort children? Right now, that's the plan, and we are finalizing it this week. Will another special be meeting be scheduled for parents of special education students to have their specific concerns and questions answered? Again, we will hold a special education meeting at some point next week. Okay. Um, we're going to call an end to this particular meeting. Any questions that are still in the queue, we will add to tomorrow's presentation. Tomorrow's presentation is really the same as today's. Um, so you can tune in about 15 minutes in if you're just looking for answers to questions. We will have everything posted. We thank you very much for your participation. Uh, please get more questions to that particular mailbox if you have them, and we will add them as they go along. Thanks very much for your participation tonight. Uh, we hope that this was helpful and informative. Thank you.